Home, Chapter 70, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction written and narrated by Mira Rose. If you have not heard the previous 69 parts of the story, go find links to them in the description box. Go watch them. Don't just skip to the end because, you know, that's boring. Um, and if you're still listening, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you aren't sure what to comment, put a flower fight. Now then, please enjoy Home. Chapter 70 Adrian Graham Devanely as Cat Noir Of course Cat didn't get a wink of sleep before showing up to the bakery. How could he when he couldn't get the love of his life out of his head? She'd left the scrapbook behind and, well, cur curiosity killed the cat, right? How could he not go through something that had his face plastered on and across it? The point in the photos, seen through Marinette's eyes, was beautiful. Sure, Adrian Agrest had his own set of problems, but he'd never doubt that no one loved him like Marinette had. It's a shame he didn't exist anymore. At least, not the version of him captured by motion pictures and front-facing cameras. But she knew that. Marinette knew that, and she still ran her thumb over his thigh and held him back after an attack. She came, knowing, after he had an attack. No one stays after an attack. Marinette was the complete package, but he was just a baker's not-apprentice and a superhero with family trauma who couldn't even face his face in the mirror. <sighs> Shake it off, Cat Noir. Smile on. The last thing you want is Tom asking questions. Smile plastered and dimples on, he walked into the bakery, making sure his visual sweep for Marinette wouldn't be obvious. It would only been a few hours. She'd still be asleep. At least, that's what he told himself to quiet his heart. She's in the back. A gentle voice greeted him. Sabine. Is she? Cat echoed, making eye contact and trying to play it cool. I'm afraid there's not much for you to do today, Sabine said, filling a display. Marinette didn't seem to sleep last night. Is she in bed now? He asked, trying to casually carry the conversation, as if she'd didn't know she came back early with him. As I said, she's in back. Oh, yeah. Right. And Kitty? Yes? He stopped walking to hear her request. Good morning. Welcome back. His heart glowed at their tradition. Good morning. He returned with a nod. I'm glad to be back. Their wordless exchange of smiles made him forget all about the girl on his mind as he walked into the back until he, literally, ran into her, a cloud of flour dusting between them on impact. Sorry, Marinette began, her face twisting from concern to recognition as she narrowed her eyes. Oh, hi, Cat. Uh, hi, Marinette. After last night, he didn't know how to approach her. Well, there's something to say for head first, which is what he literally just did. She looked down at the bag of flour in her arms, then up at him, eyes lingering on the flour on his chest before her grin twisted into something wicked. Before he had the chance to buffer, her hand was in the bag, a fist of flour with one target. Him. You're late, kitty, she yelled with a grin, flinging the handful at him. He coughed as some entered his mouth, but it was game on. I was taking a pretty girl home, he yelled back, reaching out to hit the bag from the bottom so it spewed up and onto her face before running to the island for concealment and ammunition. Yeah? What? She thought you were cute or something? Wait. Oh, wait, wait. Was she flirting with him? If she wanted cute, she could look in a mirror. 
I only know she came to catch a glimpse of my booty. He grabbed a bag and chucked it over without checking for a target. Ah! Looks like it landed. You're saying she doesn't have a peach? Let's just say I'm the ones whose buns look like they belong in a bakery. Perfect proportions and all that. He twisted his head around the corner, but couldn't see her. Where? Flower hit his head before weight slammed him to the ground, and he found himself face to face with his partner. She had him pinned with a smile on her face. Gotcha. Well, at least I'll earn my keep cleaning this up. He knew he had a twinkle in his eye that matched hers. Her expression softened, and she rolled off, laying herself beside him as they stared at the ceiling lights. Can I ask something? It was nearly a whisper. Yeah? Flower dust sifted through the air, and he had to swallow the cough beating at his lungs. Why not a crest? Cat held the silence his lungs overtaken by the question. He knew what she meant, and he wished he kept the cough instead. I want nothing to do with my father. So you changed your name? Yeah. He swallowed, still looking at the ceiling. Cat wasn't sure he could make eye contact. Graham Devanily, she said, and he heard her shift beside him. I don't like that one much better, but what choice do I have? She twisted herself onto an elbow, propping herself up enough to dust him with flour as her hair fell across her face and over him. Of course you do. You can be whoever you want. Pick a new one. It's not real. Names are meant to be given, not chosen. Then I'll... (sighs) She bit her lip. I'll give you mine! He blinked twice, her expression matching his as they stared at each other in disbelief. He hadn't expected that. Not in any timeline. And from the looks of it, she didn't either. Huh? Cat wanted to slap himself for his sloppy one-word response, but either she was proposing to him or she was proposing he became her brother. The latter, for obvious reasons, was less than ideal, even if Tom was an excellent father figure. Her face hardened, the momentary slip of expression gone. Yeah, yeah, become a Dupang Chang. Marinette, I... She rolled under her hip, propped centimeters above his chest with her hand next to his ear to hold her up as she towered over him. We're your home, right? Come on, cat. There's a reason you haven't gone back to that crusty mansion. Become a Dupang Cheng. She all but yelled at him, and instead of tearing up, although he wanted to, cat burst out laughing, covering his mouth as quickly as he could so he wouldn't spit on her. (laughs) he gasped unable to breathe efficiently enough to make it through a sentence what don't make fun of me you're far better as a dupang chang than an aggressed she wasn't wrong (laughs) please did you did you just call a multi-million year old mansion crusty you're dodging the question Marinette smacked his chest, and he laughed harder. Crusty. (laughs) He repeated, mostly to himself. Oh, Plague is going to love that one. Crusty. (laughs) Okay, we get it. Marinette sighed. Tiki floated out during the commotion, and even she looked unimpressed at his sense of humor. But... Maybe it was because of the state of the kitchen. Isn't that what you liked about me? I'm a clown. Please don't make me declaw you, kitty. And ruin this manicure? My lady, that is a crime against Paris herself. Nay, the entire world. 
And just like that, everything was right again, if only for a moment. It was him and her and nothing else. Nothing else. Except when his eyes met hers again, he found words stuck in his throat that his tongue dared not say. Just like that, when the laughter cleared, the weight of silence between their lips crushed the centimeter by centimeter difference. Just like that, when the laughter cleared, the weight of silence between their lips crushed the centimeter by centimeter distance. Just like that, every ounce of his self-control and better judgment had to beat back his heart, pounding rigid in his ears. And just like that, Cat Noir realized Marinette hadn't moved her eyes away yet either. Oh, how he yearned to kiss her. He reached up, the flower on his suit a stark contrast to the black leather wrapped around his hand, and he touched her face, smearing the residue on her cheek as the straw that broke the cat's back cracked and whistled away, leaving him to succumb to this moment and his feelings. His throat, begging to release his words, cracked open his lips as his eyes noticed Marinette trailing her line of sight down his jawline before touching her hand to his on his cheek, the other against his chest to keep herself upright. What are we doing? He choked out an accusation against his feelings, an accusation against himself. He knew better. He's the one who left. He had no right to be here, to feel this with her. You should know better, Marinette. Her face, so soft moments before, hardened as her eyebrows knit and her lips thinned. I trusted you, Cat. I know. The weight of her hand on his chest couldn't compare to the guilt. Her laugh, bitter like catnip, cut into him sharper than any word his father threw at him over the past half decade. You didn't just betray my trust, Cat. You... She balled her fist her fingernails scratching through the suit even though it wouldn't leave a mark. You destroyed my heart. There's no way to respond to that. I know. He choked out. What do you see when you look at your face in the mirror? Marinette turned her face, expression unreadable. Huh? What do you see when you look at yourself? She repeated. As expected of his partner, she knew exactly where to hurt him. But he'd answer her. He'd do anything she asked. He owed her that much and, although he had no right to, he loved her. He loved the person he'd hurt the most with his inability to escape trauma both then and now. My father. Cat took his hand off her face to cover his eyes. And the person I could never be. Silence ticked by, marked and echoed through the clock on the wall. What? She whispered. Adrian aggressed. He had a future, and I messed it all up. He could feel her stare and managed to peek through his fingers. You, she began, her face twisting into a scowl. Absolute buffoon! Before he had time to react, she'd reached for his triangle ears, taking them and tugging them upward as she rolled herself back into crisscross applesauce. A marinette? He couldn't come up with a better response. What do you mean you messed up your future? You're 
What, 22? 23? I... The only thing you're supposed to be by 23 is yourself! Her hands had moved from the cat ears to cup his face, squishing his cheeks in enough to make his lips pout. But no! You don't know who that is either! Uh, you need therapy! She lifted her palms a centimeter to give both sides of his face a small slap. And love! Accept it, Cat Noir. You're loved. Why do you think I brought over that scrapbook, huh? I don't care what you did or didn't do over the last few years. You're my partner, silly cat! He stared at her as she huffed, not sure how to respond. This was certainly not what he expected for the day, and, as usual, clown brain overtook him. Yeah? His cheeks pressed against her flower-crested fingers as a smile crept up his face. You love me? You- She inhaled sharply, her knuckles bending against his face. I'm just a homeless street cat, my lady. Then marry me. Her fingers relaxed as his smile dropped, jaw slacking as he stared. She knew better than to joke about that. In all their years, together and separate, Marinette, Ladybug, would never joke about that. I, uh, don't have a comeback for that, princess. I believe you're supposed to say yes, kitty. Yes? He stared up at her, then realized his reaction could double as a response. He didn't mean yes, like, okay. He meant yes, like, huh? Welcome to the family, kitty. Marinette stood, then offered him her hand. Dumbfounded and unsure if this was real, he took it and she pulled him up, hand lingering before a wicked grin split across her face. Oh, no. He knew that grin. He'd seen it not more than ten minutes ago. Cat saw it coming, but he couldn't dodge this time either. With one fluid motion, Marinette grabbed the bag of flour from the island and chucked it at him. Marinette, he shouted, looking at himself, then her. You've made me Cat Blanc. Her smile twitched at the comment, but she just rolled her eyes. Call your best man to help you clean this up, silly. She turned to walk out zipping off her sweater and sliding off her shoes before walking out as to not track flour. And so, Cat Noir, covered in flour, found his heart beating a rhythm he couldn't recognize as he tried to put his scrambled brain back together. Too many emotions happened just now, on the bakery floor, for him to process in real time. What just happened? Also, did he... Was he engaged? Cat Noir looked around one more time, trying to get a bearing on his surroundings, when he saw a little red blur hide around the corner. Tiki. Like Plague, Tiki was the only one who truly knew what happened to her master over the past few years. Okay. Cool. He could do this. Time to catch a Kwame. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 71 is on the way. I hope you liked chapter 70. In the meantime, while you're waiting, uh, check out these other videos. Leave a like, subscribe, and a comment in the comment section. If you don't know what to comment, put Adrian Dupang Chang. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!